So the best way to implement SAP GRC is the top-down approach. This meaning, if you see in the in the figure, this you you have governors who make the decision decisions of implementation decisions and measures, and you have a compliance team and the risk management team who will define the scope and plan the scope and do the implementation. This is the GRC modules. Okay, GRC and access control common component. So there's there is four major components in access control. The first one is access risk analysis, which is called ARA. This is the main analysis tool to analyze SOD conflict. It's a fully automated analysis tool. The second one is Access Request Management, which is called ARM. This is an automated user provisioning tool. This, this Using this ARM, that you can provision the user for the full employee life cycle. That means from the employee, when he, when he or she joins in your organization till they leave the organization. That means a full employee life cycle you can provision using this Access Request Management. The third one is business role management, which is called BRM. It's an automated role definition and management of roles. That means using the BRM, you have a lot of defined frameworks by in which you can develop the roles complying with all the uh, regulations what you have with the SOD conflicts and the approval process between these roles and the owners. And uh, there, is, there is a lot of things you can control use the time of development of the role so we will see that in detail in the later sessions and uh, the fourth one is emergency access management that is EAM this enables users to perform activity as a uh, uh, super user privileged uh, access that means uh, it's a higher level access but this access you can audit if you are in a, in a support environment that you wanted to fix something which is on emergency then you need a higher authorization so everybody may not have a lot of authorization so you don't need all this authorization all the time or maybe this this authorization which you are requesting will have an SOD conflict in in nature so these are all these authorizations are provided using emergency access management this after using this e, the emergency access this this can be reviewed this audit log can be reviewed and it can be controlled so it's an auditable environment so it's easy for uh, doing this uh, highly uh, sensitive uh, changes using uh, emergency access management so we have four different modules in access access control for four different parts in access control access risk analysis access request management business role management and emergency access management we will come to this one by one in detail in, in our later sessions and sap recommends that rfc name should be logical name that is very important yeah this point is very important SAP, it's SAP recommend that RFC name should be logical system name logical system name means the every SAP system you have a logical uh, system name which is given in your client system, client setting that we will see that uh, in our uh, SAP system itself let's see in our system how do we create an RFC connection so first you can create an RFC connection from SM59 or you can also create it by S from SPRO first let me show you SM59 go to SM59 
here you can create RFC connection here uh, you put an RFC destination name this is a client overview our client is 800 if you select and say display here this is the logical system name okay GRC CLN 800 so if it is recommended that your RFC name should be same name as this one okay let's go to the next session so we need to now we know what is the scenarios now the next IMG activities is maintaining connection setting In the maintaining connection setting we will maintain the scenarios click on maintain connection setting you will get you will get a pop up where you have to select the scenario our first scenario is authorization management AUTH select that and click it will take you a next screen where you have AUTH means authorization management this presentation what we are trying to explain this is the purchase process let's say if you wanted to purchase something we go to ME51 or ME51N and create a purchase requisition let's say you wanted to purchase some goods then the purchase requisition is sent to uh, purchasing manager or whoever create a purchase order you will go to ME21 and uh, convert this purchase request into a purchase order or include this purchase request into a purchase order or they will create their one purchase order without purchase request or whatever based on their company policy and customization then this purchase order is given to the vendor then vendor will send uh, goods then then it goes to the warehouse or stores then stores will do the good receipt meaning that good is uh, to confirm that we received these goods then it goes for invoice verification along with the goods then you will have an invoice the invoice verification is done basically we will do this invoice verification and you, this during the invoice verification you can also adjust the value of the purchase order if there is some differences uh, during the purchase order issued or and the invoices which can be reconciled then it goes to FI after invoice is verified for uh, payment processing okay let let's assume now we have all this auth authorization with one one user let's say the user want to do some intentional transaction let's, meaning want to do some fraud then let's say if the user also having authorization for XK01 XK01 is for creating bank account so he create a bank account then he he or she create a purchase requisition or purchase order then gave it to some to the bank account wherever it was created and uh, got a good receipt done but the goods is still not there in the store and the invoice is verified then they go to F110 and uh, execute the payment run so the particular bank which you have created or the vendor which you have created already got the money in the bank and but you don't have any goods inside the company so this, in this full cycle if you see without doing having any uh, goods inside the company you can easily make a big transaction if you have all this authorization with one person in this stage we will select the process ID of the MSMP configuration which we are trying to maintain it's a selection 
stage. If you can select the first one process ID and say next means that from the next and to the last stages the process ID which you have selected in the initial process ID are being configured. Here we can add additional rule values. So next one we wanted to see what is agent type. We have four different of different types of agents. Let's see how do we configure this agent. Let's say add. Let's create a new agent. Z underscore grac grc here we can specify it's an approver or notification so it's an approver then agent type the first one is directly mapped user if you select directly mapped user then you will have an additional selection which is called approver group ID you can select here in our case we did not create any groups so you can say add say a group z underscore grac approver the user ID the actual user ID which is available in the system AR star let me search user like this say okay from approver and we are from rejection this if this is enabled approver has to enter the logon credential to approve or reject the request grac initiator the result of this initiator is grac default rules so the result of this is created here this initiator rule this is the result and this is the path this path is defined in stage 5 this is the path these are all the stages and the each stage you have a approver this approver is defined in maintain agent it picks up the approvers from here so this is the fun name of this function and here we have the application name test demo test PRF plus then select create and navigate to object we want to save these changes yes I would like to save these changes This is a screen we are seeing. Here you can select what is the input fields which is required. That means input objects which is required for this rule. This is the header item, this is the line item select the header item let's assume the request type is our input or condition which we would like to evaluate let me say select the record type is assigned same like that we can assign the result and we will also select the result from here select. management then you go to access request creation In access request creation first one is access request let's create a request a reason for requesting GRC 
the more training first access request this is the approver we created so in the work inbox of this approver you, you can see access required for access role request 4000025 so open the request this is a generated password so using this one you can log into this system and this is the role which is assigned to this user go to access management access request I want to modify this request user so what you can do let's say go to change account okay let's go back uh, okay, template based request and copy request copy request also same like model user so we go to access request management you can copy from a different request let's say access request Sorry. copy request copy an existing request that is uh, let's say the first request which we created 05 and I need everything same like the other user. 